Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video I'm going to be teaching you how to play The Flow of History, which is a civilization style card game for 3 to 5 players and takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. Now in this video I'm going to be using the original version of the game, but Tasty Minstrel Games are publishing a new version in 2017. First of all I'm going to give you an overview of the game, and then I'm going to dive into the details of how it plays. In the flow of history, you will develop your nation by acquiring cards from the market. These cards improve your nation and provide either instant or ongoing effects. When you acquire a card of the same colour as one you already have, it's stacked on top of the others, leaving the production icons visible. So as your nation grows, you will gain more of these icons. The central deck of cards covers five ages, and when the future card enters play, the game ends and the points are scored. Sort the cards according to their backs. Randomly deal one of the S cards to each player who places it face up in their play area. Return any leftovers to the box. This is your starting card. It's a blue card, which means it's a government. The name of the card is here, and the production type is shown at the bottom. Each one of the starting cards is different. Each player also takes a reference card, a player marker, and four resource tokens. All remaining resource tokens are placed to the side and form the reserve. Note that in this game, there's the reserve and the supply. The supply starts with zero tokens in it. I'm using this pot for the reserve, just to keep them separate. Place the future card in the middle of the play area, and place the internet on top of it. Then, shuffle the age 5 cards and place them face down on the internet. Repeat the process with the cards from age 4, then age 3, age 2, and finally age 1. Take the age A cards and place them face up in the market. Then if you're playing with 5 players, also add the top age 1 card to the market. Randomly determine a start player, they will take the first turn and play proceeds clockwise. On your turn you perform two phases, your action phase and then a cleanup phase. In the action phase you perform one and only one of the 5 actions summarised on your player aid. I'll start by explaining the invest action, as you're going to be doing that a lot during the game. To invest in a card, you place your player marker on it, along with at least one resource token, but you may place more. Since you only have one player marker, you can only invest in one card at a time. You cannot later on move the player marker to a different card. And also, if you have no resource tokens, you cannot invest in a card, since when you invest, you have to place at least one resource token on the card. So why would you want to invest in a card? Well, let me explain the next action, which is to complete. You can only choose this action if you have invested in a card in the market. When you choose to complete a card, first move all resource tokens on the card to the supply. Remember, the supply is different from the reserve. Then, you check the investor bonus printed on the card, which is the icon shown in the magnifying glass. You then count the number of the indicated production icons currently in your nation, which does not include the card that you're about to take. So in this case, I count the number of science icons I currently have, which is 1, and take that many resource tokens from the supply. If there are not enough in the supply, just take what you can. Do not take any tokens from the reserve. Then you take the player piece back and add the card to your nation. If you're adding a card of the same colour as one you already have, it's stacked on top of your older cards of that colour. Once the card has been added to your nation, look at the icon on the left side. This tells you the timing of the effect. I'll explain these more in detail later, but the one on the working animal is an instant one-time effect, so it applies immediately. I take one resource token from the reserve for each harvest icon I have, which in my case is just the one for the working animal itself. And this brings me on to the first very important rule of the game. When you complete a card and you gain the investor bonus, you do not include the icons on that card itself when calculating how many resources you get for the investor bonus. But then when you add the card to your nation and you activate its effect, you do count the icons on the card for that ability. For example, you complete the printing press. The investment bonus gives you one resource for each science icon you have, but you do not count the printing press for that. But then you add the card to your nation and then activate its instant effect, which gives you one resource for each science icon you have. And this does include the printing press itself. There's lots of different cards and abilities which I'll explain in more detail later on, but what you've learned so far is that acquiring a card is a two-step process. 
First of all, you have to invest in the card by placing your player marker on it and some resource tokens. And then on a later turn, you need to choose the complete action to take that card and add it to your nation. However, the other players can interfere with your plans, which brings me on to the third possible action, snipe. When your opponent has invested in a card, you can choose the snipe action to steal it from under them. To snipe a card, you must first pay the amount of tokens on the card to the investor. If you don't have this many tokens, you cannot snipe this card. So in this case, you would have to pay the green player two resources. Then move all tokens on the card into the supply. The investor then counts the number of trade icons they have in their nation and takes that many resource tokens from the supply, in this case two. And then they count the number of resource tokens remaining in the supply and get half of them rounded down. So when you snipe a card from someone, you get the card immediately, but they get some compensation in the form of resource tokens, and even more if they've got lots of trade icons. Return that player's piece to them, and then you add the sniped card to your nation, and resolve the effect of it as normal. You do not, however, get the investor bonus. This only applies if you actually invested in the card yourself. The fourth possible action you can take is to activate a card in your nation that has a turn action effect. When you activate this, simply follow the text on the card itself. The final action is to harvest. When you do this, count how many harvest icons you have, and move that many resource tokens from the reserve to the supply, and then take half of what's in the supply rounded down. And then if you have fewer resource tokens than the current age, you take some more resource tokens from the supply so that you have an amount equal to the current age. And in this case, and only this case, if the supply doesn't have enough tokens, then you may take any remaining ones from the reserve. To work out the current age, just look for the highest age card either in the market or owned by a player. For example, this card is in the market and it's age 3, so we are in age 3. After you have completed your action, and remember you only get to do one action, you perform your cleanup phase. Reveal cards from the deck to refill the market back up to 5 cards in a 3 and 4 player game, and 6 cards in a 5 player game. Then check for any cards in the market which are 2 ages older than the current age. Any cards that are invested in are safe, but any that are not invested in are discarded and replaced by a new card. For example, an age 3 card has just been added to the market, so it's now age 3. There are two age 1 cards still in the market, but one of them is invested in, so that stays. The other one is discarded and replaced. If at this point the future card has been added to the market, the game ends immediately and the points are added up, which I'll explain later. There are six types of cards in the game. Blue cards are government, green cards are knowledge, orange cards are construction, red cards are military, yellow cards are leaders, and black cards are wonders. As mentioned earlier, as you gain more cards during the game, you must stack ones of the same colour. This means that you lose the main effect of the card when it's covered over, but you keep any icons showing on the production stripe. Leaders and wonders are special. You can only ever have one leader, so, if you get a new one, you must remove the old one from the game. And wonders do not stack either, but you can have any number of them and they're always visible. Next, let's look at the timing of a card's effect. I've already mentioned this icon earlier on. This is an instant, one-time effect which applies when you gain the card. This icon is an attack effect, and it's also resolved immediately when you gain the card, and it's also a one-time effect only. When you activate an attack effect, Count the number of attack icons in your nation. Remember to include the new card itself. In this case, I have a total of three. This is my military strength. Then, each of your opponents counts the number of attack and defense icons in their nations, and this is their military strength. You then choose an opponent who has less military strength than you and apply the effects of the attack to them. So, when you're attacking, your attack strength is equal to the number of attack icons that you have, but when you're defending, your military strength is actually the number of attack icons you have plus the number of defense icons you have. The attack all effect is basically the same thing, but it affects all opponents who have a lower military strength than you. This can be very nasty. This icon means that the card gives you a permanent effect which is listed on the card itself. The lighthouse, for example, gives you a science icon and an industry icon. Until, of course, the card is covered over later, in which case the effect is cancelled. 
This icon indicates that you can activate this card by using your action for the turn. And finally, this icon means that this card is an end of game scoring card, and its effect only applies at the very end of the game. So the Great Mosque, for example, gives you one culture icon for each blue card you have, but only at the end of the game. When the future card is added to the market or is directly gained by a player, the game ends at the end of the current player's turn. And if you're wondering how the future card can actually be gained by a player, well, there are some card effects that allow you to take the top card of the deck. And if the future card is the top card of the deck, then you automatically gain it and add it to your nation. Now, before we do end of game scoring, some cards become obsolete. Any card with this icon next to the main icon is deactivated. However, the production icons at the bottom of the card still remain. Each culture icon is then worth one point, and each other icon is worth half a point, rounded down. And then count all cards with the end game scoring icon. For example, since the military academy has the obsolete icon, its main effect is cancelled during end of game scoring, but the production icons still remain. So now we count the number of culture icons I have, which is seven, giving me seven victory points. The number of other icons is 23, which, divided by two and rounded down, is another 11 victory points. Then we look at my end game scoring cards. Einstein gives me two victory points because I have two green cards. Then the Great Wall gives me one additional point because I have three defense icons. And finally, the Great Mosque gives me four points because I have four government cards. My final score is 25. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play the flow of history. For more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And for more great games from Tasty Minstrel, please visit playtmg.com. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.